<laughs> this book is about a family who dies. She, she just sounds like an awful human being. Ugh, I feel like I just inhaled like a dust bunny. Whew. There's podcast element. Well, no, there's not podcast elements. Hi everybody, it's Audrey and welcome back to Chapter and Converse. Today's video is going to be a quick little book haul that I did from Murder Books in Houston, Texas. So I did a video, it's a while ago now, on my shopping carts that was like $700 of books that I desperately, desperately wanted to have all of them. But I'm also realistic and I realize that's a little crazy. So I asked you guys for some help to vote on books that you thought I should buy. So I did do the first video of books I bought, which I might have gone a little bit cuckoo, and then this happened. So I told you guys that I was 100% going to buy Every Last Fear by Alex Finley, and I was gonna buy it from Murder Books because I wanted to support an indie bookstore, and I just really enjoy them, and I really wanted to have this book. So you know how it is when you have to like, pay for shipping unless you spend a certain amount of money. So I maybe spent a certain amount of money so I could get free shipping because, you know, rationalizations. But I'm very excited to share four books with you guys today. I was waiting for Every Last Fear to be released, so my entire book order obviously was held until that came out, which is why we're doing this late, and this is more than you guys care to know. So you just want to see the four books I bought? Let's do that. So we're gonna start with the book that you already know that I got, which is Alex Finley's Every Last Fear. And one more time for the people in the back, he's not AJ Finn. So that rumor and that hubbub and all that nonsense, he's not AJ Finn. He is an attorney who works in DC who wrote under a pseudonym. And he did an interview around pub day with Jennifer Hillier on Murder Books website. You can find it on their YouTube channel. I'll link it down below if you're interested. But basically, he was a guy who wanted to write a book and just didn't want to use his real name. Lots of people do it. So all the controversy can be put to, re to bed, to rest, to rest for good, I hope. So every last fear. I already read it, but I'm not going to tell you all my thoughts until my March review. But what I will tell you is this has all the things I want in a book. We have multiple timelines. We have mystery in the past and mystery in the present. We have the reluctant return home, having to deal with some stuff. And we have a true crime love documentary. So a little bit of a twist on the podcast. And it's all woven together. And this is about a family, the Pines. And the book opens with the line, they found the bodies on a Tuesday. So Matt Pine's family, Matt is a student at NYU. His family, parents, younger brother and younger sister, went on spring break to Tulum and they never wound up boarding their plane home. And when the housekeeper for the place that they were staying in comes to clean up to get it ready for the next guest, she finds their four bodies. Not good. And it looks like a gas leak. It looks like a tragic accident and the Mexican police are just sort of like done and dusted. It was an accident, tragedy, on to the next. But the thing is, the Pine family has a little bit of a history in that Matt's older brother, Danny, is in prison for having killed his high school girlfriend a few years earlier. And a true crime documentary has come out on Netflix, which has caused all sorts of commotion, all sorts of attention to Danny's case, because a lot of people think maybe he didn't do it. So there's been a lot of hubbub around that. There's a lot of controversy about the family. The parents obviously have been trying to prove that their son was innocent and all of this just weaves together. And Matt is sort of last man standing, trying to find out what happened to his family, having to deal with all of this tragedy. And then also looking back at the night that Danny is accused of killing his girlfriend, because there's some stuff that Matt's starting to question. So if you like these things in a book, you'll like this book. <laughs> That's basically what I'm gonna tell you. But I really enjoyed it. It's a first novel. 
I just, I get so excited about new authors and hearing about their journey. You guys know that. He talked about going to Thriller Fest, which I feel like, oh my gosh, we probably cross paths there, which always excites me too, but super excited. And was like a bonus, it came with a signed book plate. So I'll take it. I'll take a signed book plate. It's not easy to get a signed book these days, but that is every last fear. So the next book I got is Darby Kane's Pretty Little Wife. And fun fact that I learned on the back, also a pseudonym. So apparently she writes romantic, romantic suspense. And this one, the line on the back is shouldn't a dead husband stay dead. So this is about a woman named Lila and her husband died. And they live in a small college town. And one of the students from the college town has gone missing. And originally everybody thought this was just sort of a, like a terrible coincidence. But then the police start looking into it. And apparently more secrets start to come out and more people are missing. So it says the small town is in an uproar and everybody's worried except for the wife. And it says Lila, she's confused because she was the last person to see her husband's body and now it's gone. So I love it. I love some small town vibes. I don't know what the college, what part the college plays in this, but I do love me some college boarding school stuff you guys know. So I'm excited for this one. I've heard some good things and you know, it was on the list and now it's in my house. The next book I picked up is Tess Sharp's The Girls I've Been, and she wrote Far From You, which was a YA thriller, and I enjoyed that one so much more than I thought I would, and I read it a couple years ago, and that was another one with like dual timelines, dual perspectives, mystery in the past, mystery in the present type of a thing, and I'm super excited for a new book from her, and I also saw on the inside, she actually has, she's written, um, children's books, young adult and adult. And I didn't realize she had adult books. So I will be looking at that next, but you're here for this one. So this is about a girl named Nora and Nora was raised by a con artist. And it says she's basically has been her mom's protege this entire time. But then her mom fell for one of her marks. So Nora pulled the ultimate con escape. So it's been five years since Nora has kind of walked out on her mom and her family. And I believe this entire book takes place over the course of a couple of hours and there's a bank robbery. So it says three teens, two bank robbers, one way out. So Nora and her girlfriend are in the bank with Nora's ex-boyfriend. And I think they're all friends. I'm not 100% sure. And two bank robbers walk in. So two guys walk into a bank. And it says they may be trouble, but they have no idea who they're really holding hostage. So I've heard so many good things about this one. And like I said, I'm excited to read something else from Tess Sharp. It looks like great fun. It looks like the kind of book that you can like gobble up in like a day or two also in a compulsive, truly devious inheritance games, good girl's guide to murder kind of a way. So I'm excited for it. And I love this cover so much too. Not enough good red covers going around. And then the last book I got, which I am so overdue for picking up another book by this fantastic author, and it's John Mars' The Good Samaritan. And this is one of his older books. Older, she says, without looking. 2017. I don't know. Feels like it should have been from longer ago. <laughs> but it says, can you trust the voice on the end of the line? And so many of you guys have recommended this one. And when I posted again, a couple years ago that I read the one, so many people responded like, oh, have you read Good Samaritan? It's like so good. It's the best, blah, 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 blah. It's never going to find out. So this is about the end of the line, which is a suicide hotline. And people call looking for reassurance that life is worth living. And it says, but some are unlucky enough to get through to Laura. Laura doesn't want them to hope. She wants them to die. So she sounds like fun. So it says that she loves talking to people who are worse off than her and she craves it. So she pushes people. She, she just sounds like an awful human being. And now we've got a guy, Ryan, and his pregnant wife wound up ending her life and he is trying to find out what happened. So it sounds like he's a little bit on to Laura, perhaps, perhaps, perhaps. And it says he has no idea the desperate lengths Laura will go to, dot, dot, dot. Because the best thing about being a good Samaritan is that you can get away with murder. So I don't know, you guys, this one sounds really, really good. I've heard about it. It's been in my cart. It's one of those books where it's like, constantly in the cart, constantly pops back up, comes back down. Like I'm just sort of like, I know I need to do it, but maybe I'll do it later, maybe blah, blah, blah. So I finally did it and here we are and it's happening. And who doesn't love getting a bookmark? I do. So that's it, short and sweet. Four more books to add to 
the sitch that's going on behind me. But let me know if you have read the John Mars book or the Tess Sharp book or the Darby Kane book. And if you would recommend one of these, make it higher up the list. You guys know I'm super moody when I read, so I don't know. I actually do know what I'm gonna read next and only because I have to finish my five star predictions. But other than that, crapshoot as usual. So let me know if you've read any of these. Let me know if you read Every Last Fear, what you thought. Let me know what you're reading. Just let me know. Let me know whatever you want to let me know down below. As always, thank you guys for hanging out today and watching and tuning in, and I will see you again really soon. Take care, guys. Bye.